Hey everyone, this is Victor Broden and Jim Mayer. Jim Mayer. Uh, we're here to talk a little about uh, our new Mesa Gear that we've had for, you know, a few months or a year in his case. Uh, what made us uh, dig it so much and uh, all the tonal possibilities one has playing it. So, uh, my amp of choice is an M6 carbine. Uh, I love it for many reasons. Uh, it's extremely versatile. And being it's sort of a Nashville guy, professionally, there's a lot of tones that I got to do uh, coming out of the same amp on the same gig um, or on the same day sometimes with different gigs. So uh, the carbine is filling that huge void to me between amps that are high tech and modern and clean sounding and more really old school, traditional sounding tube amps. And I think Mace has done a wonderful job with making the preamp sound really warm and vintage and full of personality and the power section tight and modern and that combo for me is the most versatile thing and the best choice so um here's sort of my uh normal setting that i my kind of everyday setting notice how little eq i'm using i'm boosting the bass just a little bit and uh here is really the only tonal choice one has on this amp there's five preset eq curves which are placed and chosen very well for usable frequencies so i'm the number two guy here i'm naturally a pretty heavy player so i tend to get a lot of mid-range out of my instrument so i dip a little bit of mids and uh boost a little highs and a little lows and uh it works great for a finger tone What you can tell here, uh, I think, is I'm one of those guys that are like, hey, if you want a really clean bass, you can program it, right? So what I really dig about this amp, the first thing I liked actually, is when I move my hand like that string noise and that fret, it's not that high end annoying kind of noise, that clicky, it's got a real warm kind of thing, doesn't it? That's the thing that I was hearing when you were playing that line and it blows me away about what Mesa Boogie bass amps do is the low end is incredibly punchy but then there's all this wood character in the upper end and like what you said with the string sound you really get kind of this incredible merging mm -hmm. of the vintage color with the new punch, punch. that you've got to have because i've been it, looking for it so i'm totally. happy yeah. and uh what i'm playing through right now which we'll get to more later is the vintage powerhouse cabinets uh it's a 410 and a 212 and the 410 gives you a lot of that low end, a nice high end, the 212 gives you a lot of personality and brings out the wood of the instrument. So uh, that's just finger style. We just listen to that, right? So say I want to play slap on the same gig. I'm not even changing a single knob on my bass, not even touching my EQ with the same setting. That is sick because the thing, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm on the gigs, I'll always have a lot of presets and a lot of yeah. pedals and stuff to hit. To, that's unbelievable to me that with your fingers you can get. Here I am. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's blowing my mind. And the, the, it's not so much, you know, of course I changed my technique, but the amp without a single change or even a preset switch or, or one of anything digital at my feet, like most guys, uh, I get those two tones with the same amp, same bass, same strings, and everything. Uh, here's a pick. Uh, here's, well, I'm going to just give it a little bit more neck pickup, except for that, same setting. character yeah. serious character i love it so all that's doable with the same bass and the same amp now say i stay on this bass which is a good all-around bass and i start using the actual possibilities of the amp which as you can see i don't really need to but the beautiful thing is they're there so 
Let's start with, uh, for that rock stuff, kind of what we ended with, the funky rock pick. Here's a pull deep on the bass, which I'll hit it real quick. That's regular. A little mid-range honky for some people. You do this, pull that, you get... you know and uh, that's really usable and if you want to take that even further you can cut a bunch of mids we'll do that with one of my different basses to really show how I do my rock tone with this amp but here's uh, I did the slap without changing my amp there I am changing the amp to the, uh, the preset that is a big mid-range dip and it instantly gives you that Can you tell me a little bit about this voicing switch? I'm more of an impulse and a Titan V12 guy, and I don't know what, what have they done with this voicing switch. Well, it, it, you can actually tell pretty pretty well by the. Uh, in case you don't speak English or any other language, you can just see on these little frequency curves here what's going on. We got the big mid range dip, which I'm at right now. Very useful for slap. That's the double dip. That's a double dip, which you know don't even get in the ice cream territory. Here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sex, drugs, and rock and roll don't apply. Amen. It's like no. it's like ice cream amps and yeah, polka. That's here. Right. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, so that's a very useful setting for that. Now for finger style, for example, it boosts a lot of high end, but it does a nice low. So say I use this. So this is like a shortcut that changes the whole character of yes, the amp I with one knob. I don't. That's use, it. I don't use the EQ. Because wow. to me, when you want to really show off an amp, you just set the EQ pretty much straight. Like, I got it, these three guys. Yeah. And I and I rock with this guy right here. Simple works. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's kind of that thing. And it really spanks up high, too. If you... Wow. Spanks without being harsh or brittle, you know? Yeah, nice. And uh, me and Jim, we're on our tweeters the same way. We're on them half volume, which is... Plenty of presence, tweeter-wise, but mm -hmm. more rip your head off. So that's what we got them set, and that's how much spank you get out of the tweeter. These aren't even brand new strings. So that's that setting. Here's the setting that I told you guys is my default setting. Being a heavy player, that normally scoops a little mid. Oh. It's not like there still isn't a mid-range presence there. Right. You know, with the wood and, and all that stuff. And uh, it works great for, for even this kind of... That kind of thing, you know. Tons of character. Which isn't really, you know, the slap thing. It's more of a... And then here, we go into the areas completely, the amp, how it sounds straight up. And once again, I can't get enough of doing the... Tearing the amp, just grab those strings to make it sound like a real amp. You know, the thing that strikes me about all these Mesa amps, and I'm hearing it on the carbine too, is it feels like I'm actually playing through a real bass amp. It's not just a, you know, because so, for a long time here, we've been playing through bass amps that are, it's wonderful because they're so clean, but it's almost like a surgically clinical yeah. bass sound. And it's, and uh, I think you had made a comment about Mesa Boogie being a guitar amp company or something yeah. like that. And what yeah. was that that you had said about that? I was that? just saying, you can tell Mesa's been, been, been big and successful in the guitar amp world because their knowledge and richness of the mid-range, which like I said, right. is something that I'm used to cutting out. It sort of got me addicted to putting more of it in. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a cool thing, you know? Yeah, because they just have so much character. You really feel like it, you can get expressive with it. Yeah.